A noble aspiration, Lord Captain. Troy. I am ready to acquaint you with all the particulars that interest you. People are not supremely. Hmm. Outline the situation in the Corona's expanse for me. What do I need to know and keep in mind? This is a topic for an official briefing, not a mm. casual conversation. But I will try to answer succinctly. And if you permit, in my own words. <sighs> the Coronas Expanse is considerably removed from the heart of the Imperium. This means that local warp routes become useless within months. Established mm. pathways are regularly subject to attacks from all kinds of rabble. And in the only major port, the Imperium's frigates find themselves moored alongside pirate vessels. Sounds like all adventure and all danger. Until recently, the Corona's Expanse could hardly have been called a region of the Imperium. The situation has changed with the arrival of the Lord Inquisitor, but not by much. This place operates under its own rules, you see. More radical, so to speak. But ones that That's allow awful. for a non-standard approach where there is a promise of victory. The Corona's Expanse is considered rogue trader territory for a reason. Only rogue traders have sufficient military might, audacity, and the rights granted them by the Warrant to survive the leap into the unexplored part of the Expanse, and in the event of a successful outcome, to hold on to whatever they manage to capture on the frontier. Pretty incredible to be in that position to hold so much power. What are the main players I need to be aware of in the Corona's Expanse? In the first instance, you should treat official representatives of the Imperium with respect. The Expanse may be on the fringes, but it still numbers among the territories of the Golden Throne. The arrival of the Lord Inquisitor has turned the Corona's Expanse into a less wild and uncontrolled region, to the regret of some individuals who had grown inured to the local lawlessness. Rogue traders such as yourself are also servants of the Imperium. They have been accorded special rights and powers, they wield immense authority within their territory, and they enjoy absolute respect in other parts of the Expanse. The most powerful of them are Caligos Winterscale and Incendia Bastal Chorda. Tread carefully when dealing with either of them. I mean, we are already in the territory of the Winterscales, so it doesn't seem like a good thing rivaling Rogue traders to be in one of their areas in a weakened state. If we are to speak of unclaimed territory, which is what footfall is, among the scum that dwells on that handful of asteroids, there are three factions that wield considerable influence in the sector. The first is the Kasbala Commission, organized crime in its most primitive form. Mm. It holds sway over the liege of footfall and has links to rogue trader Winterscale. The second faction is an offshoot of our shining Ecclesiarchy, followers of St. Drusus. They are actively building their forces and hold influence over rogue trader Chorda. And finally, the third faction, the Explorators, a wing of the Adeptus Mechanicus. They are willing to die and kill for the secrets of the ancient technological heresies that are hidden among the stars of the Coronas Expanse. Quite a few big players here. Conrad, our previous master whispers, what can you tell me about his betrayal? What do you think he'll do next? And on a different note, why don't we have a new master whispers? Oh, you know, Lord Captain, I am no admirer of fine art. But when we next find ourselves in a civilized port with time to spare, I will promptly find an artist and commission a portrait of the individual to whom you refer. With a hole between the eyes. <laughs> Conrad Voidfear. That he committed his treachery and escaped with his life was an unforgivable oversight. If we could have changed that, we would have. We both served Lord Captain Theodora for many years, and we never saw eye to eye. He was brash. He was never afraid of assuming responsibility, and he willingly took on difficult tasks. I am loath to admit it, but the Von Valatius Protectorate continues to reap the fruits of his labors to this day. His service always garnered my respect. But everything else about him made me want to wring the neck of that two-faced snake. I 
I'm honest, I think the Drukari companion might be your Master of Whispers. That seems like such a bad idea. <laughs> if you are taking comfort in the thought that we will hear no more of Conrad, prepare to be disappointed. You thwarted his plans, his meticulously plotted and nurtured treachery. <laughs> he is sure to attempt to strike at you, and he will use his contacts and knowledge of the Protectorate to do so. The only question, Lord Captain, is whether you will be able to anticipate his next steps. I mean, that's the thing. He will definitely still want to kill all the Von Valencius. So we'll get the warrant of trade. That is all for now. As you wish, Lord Captain. Now, I'd like to know more about my Seneschal, about you. As you wish, Lord Captain. What would you like to know? Well, tell me about yourself. What were you before you became Theodora Seneschal? I used to be an officer in the Narvis Imperialis. No, I used to be is not quite right. It was not simply a job. It was my calling, the essence of my life. I was proud to serve Lord Captain Theodora, but in my heart and mind, I am still an officer of the Imperium. I wonder how he came to serve Theodora, then. I met huh. Lord Captain Theodora on a mission where the Imperial Navy was providing reinforcements to the rogue trader's army on one of the frontier worlds. Our acquaintance was uh, not easy. <laughs> Working with people outside the Navy hierarchy has never been my strong suit. It was to my great surprise then, that after the mission's completion, I received a referral to leave my service in the Navy and join the Rogue Trader's personal council. <laughs> That's the thing, from all we know so far, it seems like they would really clash at times. Because he seems really... Well, he values hierarchy, he seems to be very direct, likes to have like... Everything doing its part, everything being regulated, and I mean a rogue trader by definition, and yeah, Theodora even more seems to be like, well, do this the chaotic way. I think so too, Alistair. Uh, it was a difficult choice for me, but I saw in the offer a chance to serve the interests of humanity even more effectively than in the Navis Imperialis. You do not need me to tell you just how remarkable a person Lord Captain Theodora was. Yeah. I recognized her at once as a true leader and formidable creative force. One who had built a protectorate amidst the dangers and wildness of the Expats. Yeah, what I already <laughs> said. It really sounds like he has feelings for... had feelings for... Theodora, and we can comment on that. Though, knowing Avalard, he won't answer. You know, the way you talk... <clears throat> you know, the way you talk about Theodora, I'm beginning to think you were in love with her. What? Mm -hmm. Lord Captain, any allegations of improper feelings or unsanctioned relations are utterly baseless and bordering on the insulting. <laughs> utterly baseless. Uh-huh. I think you protest too much. Improper feelings. Leaving the Imperial Navy is far from easy. Who are you permitted to quit your post? Probably order of the Lord Captain. You could say there was no one among the naval command who was willing to impede yeah. the wishes of the rogue trader. To do so would be to risk their own position and their relationship with Theodora. <laughs> The Lord Captain possessed certain contacts in the Imperial Navy. Contacts which she used to request help during the conflict on the border world. And which enabled her to make me an offer that resulted in my joining her retinue. I mean that the other thing, if he joined because he had feelings for Theodora, why did Theodora want him? Like after seeing him for just such a short time. The Narvis Imperialis yeah. is an ancient institution with its own mandates and well, hasn't succeeded. On occasion, in the heat of an official briefing or an informal discussion, I violated those rules, determined to press my point. 
Hmm. It is challenging to choose the words to accurately express my opinion on a situation or the actions of others that do not sound overly scathing or confrontational. Many in command were inclined to view my manner of speaking as unbefitting a person of my rank. Ah, so I was wrong about always sticking to the rules. Even though it seems to crack slightly under your intense stare. Do you have a family? I am a widower. Mm. I am a father of four. And if my information is not outdated, a grandfather of eleven. My family lives on Dargonus. Quite the family. None of my children express any eagerness or aptitude for serving aboard ship. And I would hardly have insisted that they follow in my footsteps. Well, thank you. I've no more questions. Of course. I mean, I do, but I can't ask them. You know, you may call me by my first name, Edward, if you wish. I thank you for the honor, but I must decline. As a former military officer, I believe in the importance of order in all things, including the chain of command. Order and rules. You are the Lord Captain, my direct superior. I am not prepared to address you in any way other than as regulation dictates. I must take my leave. Until next time, Seneschal. Lord Captain. And I mean, you also seem to be like the one who was closest to... one of the closest to... Theodora. I wonder how much he knows of and about her. Which we don't know. Any secrets and stuff. Idira. Servitors. The tall, middle-aged woman stares straight ahead, eyes vacant. She rubs the implant on her temple. Her collar is undone, and one of the clasps is on the verge of falling off. Sensing your presence, Hira turns her head toward you and offers you a crooked smile, even as her eyes look right through you. Hira, about your abilities. <laughs> <sighs> what are you talking about, Lord Captain? Noticeable efforts, Adira focuses her eyes on you. Let's have a nervous laugh. Ah, you seem... Like you're dissociating. Getting lost. Good. You are a Psyker. Psykers are only granted the right to live with the Emperor's blessing. Have you ever been to Terra? Look. Lady Theodora couldn't care less if some eggheads measured my brains or not. Ah. It's not about the seal on your forehead, get it? It's about what's in your gut, if it's rotten or not. My gut's stronger than the adamantine on this here ship. And my implants are better than the ones they put in you on your terror. If they weren't, I wouldn't have lived as long as I have. It kind of, kind of gives me a bit of Meryl vibes from Bang Age. <laughs> yeah, demons are evil, but I can commune with them. Hira says nothing for a few seconds, and then exaggeratedly rolls her eyes. She bares her teeth in a savage grin. Fabulous gleam in her eyes. I really hope you know what you're doing, Adira. So, where do you come from? Lyra. An outlying world in the heathen stars region. In the Coronas Expanse, uh -huh. the deeper you go, the less visible the Astronomicon gets, and the less people know about the Imperium. The arrival of a rogue trader is the best thing that can happen to a world like that. The very best. If they don't control you and you don't have to be sanctionized to survive. Astronomicon. The psychic beacon that helps navigators to triangulate a course for their void ships through the warp. The Emperor himself projects the Astronomicon from the Golden Throne on Holy Terror, the home worlds of humanity. Over a thousand psychers are sacrificed every standard day to sustain the Emperor's psychic presence in the warp. Basically a flame burning all those lives away. Well, tell me about Lyra. Lyra? It's an out-of-the-way planetoid between two faint stars. 
On Lyra, a dozen local tyrants fight over five measly continents, but they use everything they can to win, from poison to psychics. Mm -hmm. I haven't been there in many years, but there's nothing for me to miss. Trust me. Doesn't really sound like a fun world to be on. Hera begins wringing her shaking hands. But here on the ship is a different story altogether. I saw more wonders in my first year serving Lady von Valancius than I'd seen in my whole life on Lyra. Like my first journey through the warp, I was in bed for three days. I felt like supernovas were exploding in my head. I only found out later that I'd gotten off easy. <laughs> Just through the bulkhead, in the bay next to mine, a whole team turned into... Look at me rambling on, Lord Captain. Pay no attention. Oh boy. You know, you never finished your story about your first time crossing the wall. It wasn't... It wasn't like it was a very fun trip, Lord Captain. But look, if you want to be entertained, ha! I'm the woman for the job. I'll entertain you with one of the stories from my collection, no problem. But if you want to hear about the time I melted everyone in the bay next door, well, I just don't really want to go into the details on that one, all right? Oh, I thought they transformed because of their exposure to the war. Oh, gosh. <laughs> what did you do before you came to be on the ship? embroidered wall hangings in honor of our national heroes. <laughs> I did the same thing I do here, Lord Captain. Divining. Our rulers prized the ability to see into the future. Every psyker that could be found was worth a small fortune on Lyra. Yeah, see, not trustworthy. Yeah, she really seems oh, risky. I mean, kind of sounds like she shouldn't just go through the warp, right? Yeah, that would already lower the risk quite a bit. There's no such thing as a peaceful life on Lyra. People like me were especially sought after. They'd pick psychers up wherever they found them, buy kids off their parents, even just abduct them. Take me, for instance. I got taken from my street gang. The older kids sold me when they noticed there was something off about me. The ruling dynasties had schools where they trained us and beat us black and blue. And then they packed us off to serve. Some of us held on for a long time, okay, but others didn't last. Not everyone's as smart and talented as me, you know. Some people crossed the line and were out of commission before their time. And Yura looks at you expectantly, then, though clarifying, she uses her hands to indicate a head exploding, and laughs. Okay. You're quite the chaotic one. So, how did you end up in the Rogue Trader's service? Theodora von Valancius paid a visit to the ruler I was serving at the time. I don't know what the visit was for, and it's no business of mine anyway. I can still remember the way the voices in my head changed when I looked at her. They were practically screaming. She had so much behind her, and plenty ahead of her too. Is that a good thing? And I mean, now it's over. As I got at her, all of a sudden I heard a whisper. A hint, a suggestion, nothing more. But I know the difference between idle chatter and a real threat. I seized my chance and approached Theodora. I managed to whisper a couple of words in her ear before the wardens dragged me away. They beat me and locked me up. No wonder. It wasn't my place to converse with outsiders. And then Theodora's people came for me. They broke down the wall, butchered the guards. Also, I could tell them my warning in full. So I said the rest, but I didn't want to go back to my old life. And so I entered the service of the Van Valancius dynasty. On the other hand, like, Sia sounds so useful and so cool to have that power. Ah. 
Have you ever been off the ship? Mm, a few times. Not many. And if I think about it, why would I want to? I've got everything I need here. All the whispers I hear are familiar ones. They almost feel like family. And if I want to hear about the nightmares what a off the ship, I can. After some Amisek. <laughs> but don't go getting the wrong idea. If I have to, I'll follow you to the edge of the galaxy. At least she seems devoted. Let's talk about something else. Of course, Lord Captain. So, what's it like being a psyker? Um, Lord Captain, forgive me, but it would be like talking to a person born blind about colors. I could spend hours explaining, but it wouldn't make any sense to you. Uh, Elsa, do you know if there's like a backstory or like a background how, like, psychers even came into existence? Like, what's the background between people having those talents, or was it just random? Kira tilts her head to one side, though she's listening closely to something. Every Psyker feels their connection with the warp in their own way. One person might see spots and shadows out of the corner of their eye. Another feels fingers running down their spine. As hmm. for me, I've got a door in my head. One that's open just a crack. There's no way to close it, no matter how hard I try. Sounds so dangerous. I've just had to get used to the whispers from the other side. When I need to use it for work, I listen in more closely. But I usually just try not to notice it. That sounds so powerful and so dangerous. Oh boy. So, how do you live with this whispering in your head? Training habit, and a little amasek and a couple other things you can get on the lower decks. Yay, if you put all those together, it makes things bearable. <laughs> Sometimes I even wonder if I'm imagining half the voices I hear. You know, when life on board gets a little boring. Better than listening to the living, anyhow. Hmm. So, what would happen if your door just burst open? Well, oh gosh. if the door opens, that means somebody's planning to come in, right? But screw them. They're not coming through. Trust me. I know how to keep my valuable head locked up tight. Ira chuckles. There's a shrill, strained quality to her mouth. So, aren't you afraid of losing control? <laughs> Only losers who are afraid of their own gift lose control. Or idiots who never figure out what they are before it's too late. Or little kids who want to play around with their shiny new toy. If you don't know the limits of your abilities, or you're always bouncing around in your own head, that's a recipe for disaster. Yeah. Oh cool, thanks Alistair. Yes, human psychers technically always existed. They were fortune tellers, shamans, and so on. But the powers appeared no long after the birth of Slanish, the god, of, the chaos god of hedonism and excess. Her birth released a massive amount of warp energy and storms that accelerated the psychedelic mutation in humanity. Ah, that's cool. So, can you see my future? All right, that's what I'm here for. Go for after it. All. So, I'm just going to. Lean on that door in my head a little more, prick up my ears, and listen to what the warp's got to say about you. If you'll allow it, I can listen right now. Ira wrinkles her nose and looks around. Then she wipes her hands, gives her head a shake, and finally nods. She grins like she already heard some salacious detail. Hmm. Sure. All right, let's hear what they're whispering about you. Hmm? <laughs> oh my god. And you're a loss. Rubs her hands together and suddenly freezes with a vacant smile on her face. Her head slightly tilted. You feel goosebumps appear on your skin 
and your collar begins to waver ever so slightly, as if moved by a breeze from a half-open door. Seek not on firm ground, but in a golden hall suspended in the void. There waits a child without kin, but with a name blind to truth. She draws the brush across the canvas and does not notice that her palette is full not of paint, but of blood. And with each smear, this well does not deplete, but fills and fills up to the brim. One thing is clear. When this vessel overflows, none will remain unstained. Nice. I know from playing the beta who that is referring to, and that's really cool. Both the thing otherwise it makes no sense at all. Nice. I hope I will remember talking about that once we come to the scene. Among the blind men and false prophets, a red robed uh. sage seeks the answer to a question. He does not know that it is not the answer he must seek, but the question that will draw everything into focus. Will you help him, rogue trader? But mark that sometimes ignorance is sweeter than oblivion. Thank for that. And I guess we'll get a third one. A chained mm. hound chases after glimmers of the aurora, but sparks in the scent of oil confound his nose. A chain trails after him. What will happen if you pick it up? Will you become his master? Or merely another beast in the pack of his true lord? If you have any theories what those are about, and haven't played so f that far that you know it, um, feel free to chat. Would be cool. I really like those things. It's like, makes sense when you know the things, then you're like, oh, everything is fitting together. But usually when you hear them first, you don't really get clues. <laughs> The glow of dawn bursts forth from its prison. Another one. Dungeon walls cannot contain the dark essence wallowing in the dust. A naive cub pushes his nose into a familiar hand, one that holds death in twisted glass. Cherish it or cast it off as a burden. The uh. sword of change has already been raised. What is one more life to it? I have at least a theory about that one. Uh, I'm sorry, Lord Captain. The voices are going wild. I can't make out a thing. I'll try to rein them in somehow, but for now... Hera strains to listen, then frowns and shakes her head. The Psyker shrugs sheepishly and sniffs. So, did you know Theodora von Valencia as well? None of the officers knew the Lord Captain well. Not even Abelard, and she was always closer to him than anyone else. Uh, she told see. me from the off that if I ever listened to anything in the warp about her without her permission, I'd be going out through the airlock. I'm not an idiot, so I never stuck my nose where it didn't belong. Only when I was asked. Ah, oh, that would have been so interesting. It's hard to wrap my head around the fact that she's Gone. Lady von Valancius gave me everything I have. She opened the stars to me and the paths between them. I... I still think I can hear her voice. And your eyes darken, and a strange, otherworldly expression comes over her face. She lets out a sharp breath, shakes her head. You know, things are strained between you and Argenta, isn't that right? The little sister is afflicted with her own set of voices. Ones that whisper to her about corruption and heresy. <laughs> the silly girl doesn't realize that if she wants to find the source, she needs to start by looking in her own head. <laughs> That's definitely heretical. You're for silence, and then in a different voice, she has the last part. I must take my leave. Of course. Always at your service, whenever you need me. So cool. That it is voiced. Very good. That. Okay, off to distant planets. Or, well, kind of close by planets. Or should we talk to 
the three officers. Mm. 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 You know, let's talk to them later and let's go for the Corona's expense. I do some action. To the officers, they don't take long. Okay, then we will do that. Uh, back to the bridge. It was just that if it takes a very long time, I would like to do action first. 